Hi, I'm Kevin Kimmel with Yamaha Commercial Audio. I'd like to talk to you today about the gain compensation circuit in the CL Series consoles. We'll talk about what is gain compensation, how does it work, when do you need it, and when do you not need it, and we'll also look into the advantages of the way that we implement it. Then we'll look in a little bit to how I've applied it in some practical applications uh, on some of the gigs I've done. So gain compensation is a digital circuit that works automatically in the background on the back end of the head amp circuit. So when there are two or more consoles on the network sharing the head amps that are in the RIO stage boxes, gain compensation is needed. If a head amp is adjusted with gain compensation on, the inverse action is done. In other words, if I turn up a head amp 3 dB, with gain compensation on, it will automatically turn it down 3 dB. So there's also an advantage to using the RIO stage boxes with this type of system, and, and that is that it serves as a digital splitter. So we don't have to have the cost of a splitter, a splitter. we don't have to have the cost of a multi-core snake, the termination of all the connectors, the time, the patch panels, all of that type of thing. That expense goes away. Not to mention if it's an install, the conduit size would be much smaller than, than you would need for a multi-core because we're only using CAT5E and CAT6 wire. Another thing that's good to remember is that gain compensation is completely independent from the digital attenuator, which is in the EQ section. It's also independent of the digital gain circuit, which is a new circuit for us, and we'll get into that here in a minute. Okay, so let's take a look at what set of features are for the network, or everyone, versus what is local to each CL console. So, if we open up the I.O. device window, and it's the R.I.O. tab, when we touch on the stage box, we get a view of eight channels worth of inputs. So, what we have here is the phantom power, the analog head amp, on-off for gain compensation, as well as a high-pass filter. Now, this high-pass filter is at the network level, so it's for everyone, and is completely independent of the high-pass filter that is in the EQ section. So, you have both, you can use both, but just know that they're separate. So next, we'll take a look at what is specific to each CL console. So now let's take a look at what is local to each CL. If we open up a head amp, what we see here is, on the left, the, the phantom power, the analog gain, and the gain compensation. Those are the same settings that we saw in the RIO view earlier. This is global, this is for everyone on the network. What we see on the right side is local, local to each CL operator. There's the patch, the name, the icon. You've got uh, polarity, of course, and now we have the new digital gain stage that I spoke of earlier. This gain stage right here, the digital gain, allows us to go plus 24 or minus 96, and that's the local adjustment for each input and on each CL. So, if I turn on gain compensation, everyone, each CL operator on the network gets to see that. They would see the head amp, they would see the gain compensations on, they certainly would see if phantom power is on. So, also notice that we have a blue triangle here on the perimeter of the, the analog head amp setting. That is um, an indicator of where the level is locked in at for the network. The gain compensation is going to be working from that point. So, if an adjustment is made to the, the head amp, the inverse action that we talked about earlier is from that point. So that level is locked in, the level that we hear at each CL console, at each Dante device on the network for that matter, is, is locked in at that level. And so if we're doing a, a gig and I'm at front of house and let's say you're at monitors, um, regardless of which one of us is, has, we've agreed that is going to drive the head amps, if let's say it's you, if you're, when you make a change to the head amp, I don't want to hear that, that level change. So the gain compensation allows us to realize that, it locks it in. So if the head amp is adjusted, we see the analog side go up. The level gets hotter, but because it's doing the inverse, it doesn't get louder, but, the, but what happens is the signal to noise ratio changes. So an example of that would be you, you set the, the head amp when everything looks fine. You're hitting the converter nice and hot the way, you know, the way you like to. Let's say that's how you like to run your mic pre's, which is a good idea to use the most of the, the bits in the converter. Well, then we get the show time and the keyboard player, let's say it's a keyboard player on that particular input, it's not playing as loud. So you would want to make an adjustment to the head amp in this case so that you could, you could get that 
that converter working harder, get more of those bits working. So, so what happens is the, the signal to noise ratio gets better because the signal comes up, the noise floor goes down, so we get a quality change, we don't get a level change. In the background, it's doing the inverse. We don't hear a level change, not at my desk, not at your desk, not at any Dante device on the network. So you don't have to go back and redial your monitors or adjust your PA mix or your broadcast mix or your recording because that level is being maintained by the gain compensation circuit. So locally, each operator would just go ahead and make adjustments at the digital gain stage if you needed to get your fader into a better position. So that's that's a quick example of how, of how our gain compensation works in the real world. We'll give you some more examples and let you hear it in a minute. You can have multiple CL consoles on the network at any one time, four of which can have head amp control. Each CL console can control the head amps on up to eight of the RIO units. Every desk has head amp control. We don't have a master-slave situation here, and I'll, make some, I'll show you some good examples of that here in a minute. So with CL, we have a fairly complex system that can be set up pretty easily on the touchscreen. But mix engineers need to have a conversation and agree on a few things in their approach to the system. For example, who's driving head amps? And will we use the high pass filter in the RIO unit or not? Also, uh, we can get clever with the, what we do with our gain knob on the surface. For example, if we're doing a gig and I'm driving head amps, then at my, at my CL, I'm going to have the gain knob be analog gain. But I want, I want the digital gain on the surface, so I'll take user defined knob A and I'll make it digital gain. Now, at your end, if I'm driving, I would, I would highly recommend that on your surface, you go ahead and you make the gain knob digital gain. That way, when you're in a hurry and trying to adjust gain and out of habit reaching for that knob, you're doing digital gain, which is local to you, and it won't affect me. Now, also I'd go ahead and say you should go, I think you should go ahead and make that your user defined knob A, analog gain, the head amp. That way, if, if, if something happens and I've walked away from my console, but we have an, an issue with the gain structure on a channel, you have the gain knob on the surface just in case of an emergency. Once we get into show mode, maybe it's not, maybe it's not necessary and you reassign that knob to something more practical for, for running the show. But some of these things need to be considered. Next, we'll take a look at some practical applications and, and how this works, how it sounds, um, and, and some examples of when you'd make an adjustment to a head amp with gain compensation on and when you would want to turn gain compensation off before you make an adjustment. 